It's Saturday, March 30th, 2024, the day before Easter, and I just wanted to spend a moment and tell you why I decided to get the turbo engine instead of the V6. Good morning again. Uh, as you saw, I've got a, a coffee mug that uh, says St. Lucia. My wife and I were blessed to be able to take a trip. Thank you to my company for that. Um, that was an incredible experience. One of those things that, man, it would have been great to have the Jeep, but if you guys have ever been there, uh, those roads were a little scary to drive on, and they drive on the other side of the road, so for sure we would have had all kinds of an issue. Well, as I mentioned at the top of the video, I wanted to talk about why I bought the Turbo instead of the V6. So I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, our first Jeep, family Jeep, was a 2022 Sport S, the Hydro Blue that you guys have seen in previous videos. And that was my wife's Jeep, and uh, she loved it. And when we were deciding between the two, uh, they had that one on the lot, so that made that decision a lot easier. But the sound of the V6 was absolutely incredible. It growls, it's got great grunt, it feels good. Everything about it was really awesome. But we also test drove the turbo. And the sales guy was like, I don't know, turbo, moving parts, extra pieces, you know, Jeeps need normally aspirated engines. And I don't disagree uh, with that in, in many ways, you know, keep it simple for sure. Heck, the whole purpose of basic Jeep dude is keeping it simple. Um, but after driving that turbo, I was absolutely hooked. I felt like that was the better engine choice. Uh, yeah, it doesn't sound great. Uh, let's be straightforward. Uh, I've seen all the comments on, on forums and Facebook pages. Sounds like a sewing machine and it, it startup, it sounds like a diesel. All true, all true. It's not a great sounding engine, but the drivability of that engine is through the roof incredible. And that was my primary reason for, for doing that. And you know, it doesn't hurt the fact that they don't upcharge for that engine, that that is a, a no cost option. The only downside is not being able to get a manual transmission. And I originally had wanted to get a manual transmission. I wanted the most basic model that you could get. But the downside is you can't get the turbo in a manual. And I had to decide um, last year, a V6 and manual or turbo, and then they put a stop sale on the manual transmission. And so I, I was on the fence between the two, you know, manual, which I want, uh, or turbo, which I really want. And the turbo won out. It was just a better deal. Uh, and it was the better choice from there. And I could not be happier with that choice. Now, as far as fuel economy is concerned, when my wife had hers, she does a lot of commuting for work. It's gonna be about a 50-50 blend of highway and city stop-start traffic. She was getting anywhere between 17 and 20 uh, miles to the gallon, and the sticker was 17 and 23, so pretty accurate. Uh, for me, I'm easily getting 22 in town, 21, 20 if I really huff it, and I don't really huff it. Um, I, I really enjoyed the fact that I have tremendous amount of power, pretty quiet engine, uh, but also that it's incredibly efficient with fuel. We, uh, if you remember our trip last year down to Galveston, uh, I use a fuel log and, and I always check how much I'm getting in fuel economy. At one point, and this was all driving highway speeds, I, I wanted to make sure that I was not uh, exceeding the speed limit because I wanted to see what kind of fuel economy I could get out of that. I peaked at 28.1 miles per gallon on a two-door soft top Jeep with two people in it. I can't believe that kind of a fuel economy number uh, coming from a brick like a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, and uh, it's, it's bizarre. But I would say on average I'm getting anywhere from 21, 22, uh, mostly in city and 25, 26 on the highway on average from there. Excellent numbers, excellent economy, um, plenty of power. I mean, it's got all kinds of get up and go. And comparing it to her 22 
V6 that she had. The only difference between those two, obviously a Sport S with a hard top, uh, so a little bit of extra weight, but considerably peppier. I, I would all day, 10 out of 10 times, choose the turbo again and again and again, even though I don't have that wonderful sound of the V6. And folks, that V6 sounds great, but that's fine. Uh, this turbo was just such a great engine from there. So when you get into the cost of purchasing it, uh, where it's a no cost option, uh, the downside of not having the manual is, is really the only strike against it. Uh, the fuel economy and the power, everything about it just makes it an excellent choice. And I can see why they're putting this engine in all kinds of their vehicles. Um, now, long term, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how this engine will do at 100,000 miles or 200,000 miles if, if any of the engines make it uh, to that level from there. But I, I would have to say that this being such a low boost turbo, uh, it's not really pushing it that hard. Uh, could not be more pleased. So, hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Have a great Easter. And if you ever get a chance to go to St. Lucia, do it. It's incredible. It was a life-changing experience.